So this is classed as an altar. This is the altar of the site, Alta di Monte de Acodi. And so this could have been the original sacred Omphala stone. And this was erected then next to it, the great pyramid site here. And these are some of the holes cut right through the rock. And you can see both sides of it there. You can kind of put your hand through there and see it come out. And there's several of these around the edge here. This has been carved right through the solid rock all the way around. Whether that... Ah, it's acoustic. You can hear the acoustic. It's got different notes coming out of it. Listen. Technically, it is a dolmen. This is a dolmen because it's raised up on some other stones. You can see a couple of them here. So this is quite rare, quite unusual. Whether this was here before, it's likely it was because we know that the, the standing stone over there was here before the main site. It was originally like a village settlement with circular huts. And then this was smaller and this was painted red around the sides. And it was more of a platform and then it became this kind of ziggurat pyramid. So this is probably one of the earliest parts of this structure and it's got acoustic qualities. Which you can hear. Amazing. You just see on this graphic here that you've got the main capstone on top just here. And underneath you've got like little chambers, spaces. So this would suggest, obviously it's like a dolmen, but that would give it acoustic qualities. And then you've got all these holes all around the edge, probably to tune it. And so I would suggest that this was indeed an altar stone that altered your state of consciousness. So these are the two altars that were found here at the site. The one in the distance is the larger one. And the, the one here looks like very small, but again, it's on raised stones. But you can see underneath both of them, there is a sacred kind of area where blood or water or some kind of fluids were drained into to like feed the earth, to fertilize the earth. Perhaps even the egg in the distance there could have actually been a fertility symbol of the egg. And you can see the little cut marks that have been put on this on phallus stone. But it's known that this wasn't found in this particular spot. It was actually found down the eastern side, just down this side somewhere. So it could represent something being facing the east. It's obviously split or been deliberately broken. But you can just see the detail of the small cut marks in it really quite intriguing when they would do this. There's actually two of them, there's a smaller one just next to it. This is the great men here. This was here before the main pyramid was. It was here at the same time as the Omphala stone we see on the other side. Um, and this was placed on this side about 5,300 years ago. Um, the Azuri culture came in and they were like the megalithic masters and they started building the necropolis, the hypogeums, raising megaliths, dolmens and other such sites. Before that, there was an earlier site here of just local people uh, building uh, oval huts, circular huts. And then this came in different stages, but you can just see along with this, we have quite large blocks all along here. So all these are very large blocks. This is like Cyclopean masonry, which is what we find in different parts of Sardinia and Italy and other places. So it's just intriguing that we find men here like this linked with what looks like a pyramid site here in Sardinia.
So this is what the site looked like 6,200 years ago. This is what it looked like 5,500 years ago. The beginnings of the pyramid or the ziggurat was 5,300 years ago. And finally, what is left today was built 4,800 years ago. So we're looking at 2,800 BC. And this is what we kind of see today with the temple sanctuary with the steps. But below that though, this date, this sort of 5,300 years ago is very interesting because it shows a different type of temple that had red painting all around it, much like we find in the Mayan world. Um, and below this, obviously, we have the megalithic construction with the dolmen and the large monolith. And before that, just basic houses. Very, very interesting. on top of the pyramid now, but in the surrounding area, from some of the earliest Neolithic phases, it is known that there were many Domo de Janus sites, which basically means hypergeums or rock cut tombs, where the earliest culture here buried. And you can see little dips in the ground with the stonework, which is probably where they are. We'll zoom in on a couple of them now. But it just so it does suggest that this was used for many thousands of years and it was only really re put together in you know around 1990 and reopened the fact is, is to me this is one of the most important places in sardinia if not the whole mediterranean and yet no one's here just here on our own no one else just enjoying it um and so i'm absolutely stunned by that i'm still in the sort of you know peak season early september but it's just it's so similar to the ziggurats of ancient Mesopotamia, Sumeria. It's got similarities to some of the mound sites in you know, different parts of North America, the Mississippian culture especially, and also the, some of the fat, flat top pyramids in Mexico. So this is a really, really interesting place, the fact that we've got one of these and only one in Sardinia. So even the Omphalos stone here, the rounded sort of egg-shaped stone, is particularly interesting. It isn't in its original position. It was found just around the corner on the east side, and it's got small indentations which were deliberately done, which was a design thing which was done in this part of the world. So I find that really intriguing, um, because this is something we find in the Greek islands and other such places. And, uh, and the similarities don't end there because these cyclopean or sort of semi-polygonal walls are also what you find in Greece, Crete and other Mediterranean places. Obviously on the west coast of Italy, we have um, the Etruscan and the Pelasgia, which were an earlier culture there. And the Azari may have been the same people, in my opinion, because the same era, same kind of design. We have a mixture of the classic megalithic with dolmens, standing stones, rock cut tombs like you find in Italy. Uh, so they could well be the Pelasgians. Um, so I find this just really fascinating, really unusual site here in Sardinia. And the other thing is the similarity to the ziggurats is just you cannot, you know, you cannot mistake this is just like Mesopotamia, Sumeria. Potentially, it go, it's as old, the first phases are as old as that area, going back to 3500 BC, the first constructions here. And then later different elements were built up over time by different cultures. But um, combined with all the other megalithic sites, this could have been the kind of omphalous point, and that stone may represent that. This could have been where the first people began building their constructions to spread out all over Sardinia and even into Corsica, because we're not far from the coast here. It's actually just north of here where you get the, the boat to Corsica. And just north of here as well is where in 1953, eight foot skeletons were discovered. And so this could have been the site that marked their appearance on this particular landmass, the landmass of Sardinia. So I'm just walking down the pyramid now, down the sort of main strip. And this shape is very interesting, something that JJ Ainsworth's been researching. We find it all over the world, represented in different places for different reasons. And it's almost like a libation table. And, uh, and it represents fertility. So we have these multiple elements of fertility here. Sardinia is one place we must visit again, just to get, we've just barely scratched the surface and we've visited about 15 sites already. So very, very beautiful, very interesting and uh, well worth a visit. Just to the west of the pyramid here, this could be one of the ancient grave sites. And you can see like the small stone walls in it. 
I'm not going to walk in it because I think it is a grave site. And you can just see this could well be that. We see, you can see behind me here the great structure in the background, but these stones here I think are very important. I think these are part of the old graves of the earliest culture here. And these simply could be giants. Uh, uh, it sounds strange, it sounds kind of obscure and outrageous, but not far from here, literally just north of here, um, just on the coast, in 1953, some eight foot skeletons were found. And many, many of the sites in this country are attributed to be being built by giants. So I believe this was probably one of the earliest sites in this whole land. And this was part of the giant culture that spread throughout the Mediterranean and the world, and may have even ended up in North America, and may have even come from the Bible lands, we just don't know. But there's been evidence of this, it's been investigated by Forbidden History on Yesterday TV channel, and more research needs to be done. But these statues that were found in Monte Prada, uh, not too far from here, uh, slightly to the west and south, were giant beings. They were huge. They were representations of people who were over seven feet tall. We're just here on the northwestern corner and you can just see the size of some of these stones are quite remarkable. This is serious cyclopean masonry. So this is the anthropomorphic pillar, which we, uh, we photographed and filmed in Sasari Museum, the original. And you can see here, this was found on this northern side of the main site here. This is the original position, and it's got this very unusual relief carving on it. Could be a female figure, could be something completely abstract. We don't know what it is yet. And it is interesting because the position of this, which is kind of facing the north, more or less, the sun, as it revolves round and it appears later in the day, this is going to be lit up, uh, especially in the winter months. And so it could be a representation, it could be a shadow stone where the shadow could reflect. And when it's lit up, it sort of marks a certain time of year, much like we find potentially at Silistani and even at the Quebecli, is one of my theories is that indeed these are the case. That's all about the movement of the sun and even the moon. It could have an effect, it could reflect light on it, it could show different shadows and so on and so forth, which mark different times of the year and ceremonial times of the year. Along with this main stele we just looked at, there was a second one which you can see on the left which has spiral carvings. Now, this always intrigues me when you see this at sites because this is like, to me, a symbol of the ancient gods, the ancient builders, and to me it's a signature that they were here and they were spreading their knowledge, they were building these sites, they were teaching people how to do such things. And you can see that as a prime example just here and here. And even on the stele just in front of us over here, on both sides of it, on the back as well, we have a design. We also have a ramp on the back as well as the front of the structure, which is very reminiscent of the ziggurats from Mesopotamia, Sumeria. We have these structures around the northeastern side as well. So just in front of us here was supposedly a site, we're just on the sort of uh, northeast corner, was the sorcerer's hut because of the some discovery of some of the remains near it. A bovine horn, shells and a jug were found. It was thought that it was deliberately even burnt down and it had medium sized stones making it up. So this would have been a um, very interesting little area where the so-called sorcerer did his stuff. A small idol and a shell full of red ochre was also found that may have had a religious function. And we know that red ochre was used to, to carve uh, and to paint rather in some of the hypogeums or the um, Domodigenus here in Sardinia. So we're just leaving this amazing site now. This is a very impressive site, well worth a visit if you're in Sardinia. It's a brilliant ziggurats type site. It's got megaliths, stone, stories attached to it. It's in the realm of the giants and absolutely blown away. So if you're in Sardinia, head north, get to Sassari. This is about 15 minutes from the town.
Thank you.